Hello everyone and how is everyone doing? So I have had a few people ask me why have I posted so many range guide videos and magic but why haven't I posted any milli ones? So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So to do this method you must use or suggested to use the tabli lodestone. The easiest way to do this is clicking your home teleport and then clicking on the tabli lodestone and you're basically be in this area. Now there is a bank here in case you forget something, but today I am taking four bandos, um, a chaotic mole, a fury, a 99 cape, and I've got my prayer potions, my prayer renewals, my adrenaline potion, which isn't a requirement, but it might help because we're gonna be using our abilities. And I've got a steel titan. Now that does require 99 summoning, but if you do bring a familiar that can help you it might increase your experience just a little bit, and but it still will help. A bone crusher and also a charming imp will be very useful. All you gotta do is travel south of the bank and go into the cave that goes underground. There is gonna be a lot of bones, so for all of you people who want to stay here for quite a long time, you might wanna bring the necklace from Dungeoneering that buries your bones for prayer experience uh, for prayer points, but it's really up to you. I usually like to get um, faster kills rather than saving a bit of money, but it's really up to you. Now we're literally going to be training in the same area as where this guy is training at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just quickly click on one of my friends and go on their world, and hopefully. There won't be anyone there. Sadly, if you do share a world, your experience rates will drop quite a bit. So I strongly suggest you don't share a world and find your own world. As you can see, they are aggressive for the first 10 minutes, which once they aren't aggressive anymore, you can basically um, run away and run back and they will be aggressive again. And I did bring a scrimshaw just because I accidentally made the untradeable version. Usually I do focus on making them tradable and then selling them. Now, as you can see, they're very easy to kill. They don't hit very hard at all. And you can use momentum here and basically stand in one spot and go away from keyboard. But you may notice that the experience rates will be around 250K experience. If you do use your abilities to kill them, you will notice that your your experience rates will be a lot higher, maybe even reaching 280 or even 300. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing 10 minutes and I'm going to be working out my experience after the 10 minutes and you'll basically have an overview of how fast this is. The only thing I don't like about this guide um, not about this guy, but about this method is that the hellhounds can be killed so fast. It just means every few seconds we will have to be clicking, clicking on another hellhound to kill it, which is the only pain in this method. But if you don't mind the clicking intensity, you know this is obviously going to be a good method for you to use. So I'm just using my all my abilities I've got on my ability bar. Um, they aren't hitting hard as you can see, so you might want to bring a few sharks or a bunyip, depending on your summoning level of course, but do make sure to bring some sort of summoning familiar just to help you out. As you can see, he is helping me out in my kills and any sort of help will be useful. They don't drop anything besides bones and charms. The only thing you, thing you might see every so often is in an effigy. Besides that, you won't be seeing many other drops, um, but it's also a very good idea um, to keep an eye out for the drops. Now, I'm just quickly gonna go into this mysterious entrance. This does require a dungeoneering level, which I do have, but um, I'm not sure what it is at the moment. I will post it in the description below. But the only good thing in here is that they're a lot more concentrated, so you can easily kill them a lot better. But 
If you haven't got the dungeoneering level for these ones in here, you can obviously stay outside and basically kill those, but you might notice that the experience rates might be slightly different. Now as you can see they're very close to each other, um, but overall it's just very easy. In here they do attack you also, so you can be away from keyboard and use momentum and you will notice that your experience will be around 220 to around 250, you know, give or take a few, a few thousand. But the only thing I don't like about in here is that there is a lot of space and loads of them can attack you. So it just means that you will be getting hit a lot more often than usual. They are weak to slash, so if you have got some sort of slash weapon like drag or long swords that would be a good idea to be using but as you can see i'm using a crush weapon and it seems to be working quite well at the moment i've been in for around three minutes now and so far it's going so good i am not 99 in all my attacks i'm actually 98 in attack but then i am 99 in everything else so if you notice that I'm getting very high experience, that could be the reason why. I'm basically 99 in almost everything. Um, the only thing that I'm not using is potions. If you do wanna bring extremes or super potions or overloads, um, you can do so. And it will help, obviously. But as you can see, they're very easy. Um, you might get bored quite easily here um, so you might be wanting to watch a film or something similar just to allow you to help with the time but overall you will find this very easy. Now as I mentioned already some people might prefer to bring a, a demon horn necklace for the prayer, the prayer points and um, you can do so you will have basically unlimited prayer if you do that um, but you will notice that if you aren't using like a fury or an amulet of glory that you might find your clears slightly slower after a few hours but if you're only going to be here for a couple of hours you might not want to bother with using a demon horn necklace because it won't make much difference at all if you have got a high prayer level and you notice that your HP or your life points is going down, you might want to use Soul Split. If you haven't got Soul Split, you can use Regenerate. Or well, there is that, this Guthix one here. Oh, I'm going to use it now. It's called Guthix Rebalancing. Oh no. Oh, Guthix Blessings. It's from the World Wakes quest. The quest itself is not hard to do, but um, it is a very long quest and the requirements are quite high. Yeah, but you could heal like that. It really does depend on the sort of skills you have and the sort of levels you have obtained throughout the, the days. So it does really depend. So I'm basically just mumbling about nothing. I'm just trying to get the 10 minutes over, um, but Honestly, you don't have to see it after 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it here actually. But yeah, this method is around 300K per hour if you are using abilities. If you use momentum, it will be around 230 to around 250. And yeah, that's about it. You don't need to bring defensive armor. You can bring offensive. Like um, Bandos is offensive, but then Torba will be defensive. The only reason to use offensive is to increase your hits. And as you can see, their life points are very low, around 3,300. So if you have got some sort of weapon where you can two hit most of these, you will find it very useful. So thanks for watching. If you have got any questions or even any tips, make sure to post below and I'll see you all soon.